This is the light word part three. This will be the last part in which our Lord God Jesus takes us on through this revelation that he's mapped out for us. However, you're going to find out that as our eyes and our ears are open to this revelation, throughout scripture, this revelation of the light word is everywhere. So we're going to continue now in the book of Psalm 89, verse 35 through 37. Once I have sworn by my holiness, and I will not lie to David, that his line, his seed, will continue forever. We know that line, that seed from David, is Jesus. And his throne, the throne of Jesus, of course, endures. It comes to pass before me like the sun. Okay, we're relating back to that sun in the sky. It will be established forever like the moon. They're not going anywhere. That word established means to be firm. The faithful witness in the sky. What is the moon witnessing? It's witnessing the light of the sun. It's reflecting it. It's saying, I'm a witness. I'm bearing witness that there is something greater out there. And that is the sun. And we know Jesus is the exact representation of God. Jesus came on earth to bear witness of the Father. And Jesus says, my testimony is true. So like the moon, he bears witness. So we're going to move on now to the book of Isaiah, chapter 24, verse 23. This is one of my favorites. The moon will be dismayed. It will be embarrassed. The sun ashamed. For the Lord Almighty, the Lord of hosts, will reign, will become king on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his elders with great glory. This is such a turn where we went from all this bright light and this greatness to all of a sudden the moon is embarrassed, the sun is in shame. It sounds almost confusing, but it's not. It's perfect. So this is what the Lord showed me, and I will read it to you. The moon is disgraced and discredited, for the real true embodiment is here, and the sun is ashamed. It cannot outshine God Almighty. That is true now. However, this verse is really referring to when Christ himself sets his foot here on earth again at his second coming. So when he comes back to do the ruling and the reigning, that which has been proclaiming him, has been declaring his glory in the heavens, is now put to shame. Because that is what God made. That which God makes is not higher than he himself. So he, the creator, is here on earth. So everything else is put to shame compared to him. And I just think that is just so beautiful. So we're going to move on now to the book of Job, chapter 18, verses 5 and 6. And we're going to see a little bit of an addition here as well. The lamp, and this word lamp actually is the word light, let there be light. So the light of a wicked man is snuffed out. So we went from the beginning of let there be light, and we know he breathed in the light, and it's the soul and spirit. Now we're seeing it being snuffed out. The flame of his fire stops burning. It stops shining. Okay, so what's going on here? Six, the light in his tent becomes dark. The lamp, now this is the word lamp. The lamp beside or over him goes out. And remember that the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So all of a sudden this all becomes so dark. The word becomes dark. Your light's being put out. What's up with that? That is sin. That is where sin comes in and snuffs it out. So in the beginning, when he created Adam and Eve, it was all perfect. Okay, as soon as Adam and Eve disobeyed and sin came into the human race, everybody's born with it. Everybody's born with sin. Everybody's born with the father of lies, Jesus says. And that is so true. You have to be born from above or born again. So we're seeing that this light is being extinguished. However, even though the light is out and it's dark, there are these coals, these little ambers that are still there. And that is for them to be relit to be born from above again. So let us move on to the book of John, chapter 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light. Now this is in the New Testament, so this word light means the light source. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk, conduct their life, that means, or full circle around. So whoever follows me will never walk full circle around in darkness but will have the light, that light source of life. And that goes back to the book of John, where it says, in Jesus is life, and that life is the light of man. 
So just recently in the book of Job, we talked about how this light can be snuffed out because of sin. So the light is snuffed out. But then Jesus is saying, whoever follows me won't stay in this darkness. In other words, that dark tent that we just talked about from Job, but will have the light of life. And this is the process of being born again. The next book is 1 John chapter 1, 5 through 7. This is the message we have heard from him, Jesus, and declare to you, God is light. And that is the same word that we just got done using the light source. God is light. In him, Jesus, there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, Jesus, and yet we walk, we full circle around, we conduct our life in the darkness, we lie and do not live out or we don't practice the truth. But if we walk full circle around in the light, as he, Jesus, is in the light. So remember Jesus said, I am in the Father and the Father's in me. So as he, Jesus, is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, the Son of God, purifies us all from sin. So Jesus is the light and it says God is light. So Jesus is God and he is the one who created you, who blew breath into you. You have that light. Sin came in and has snuffed it out, but he's looking to breathe it in again. So you're born from above. The next book, book of Psalm 148 verses one through six. And it says praise. This word praise is not the word praise like sing praise. It is the word, actually it means to shine. Throughout these six verses, it actually means to shine. So it's translated to praise. So I'm going to kind of use both. So praise to shine the Lord Yah. Praise to shine the Lord Yahweh from the heavens. Praise to shine him in the heights. Praise him. That means to shine. All his messengers or angels. Praise to shine him. All his hosts or his army. Praise to shine him. Sun and moon. Praise to shine him. All you stars of light. And that word light is let there be light. It is not the luminary light like in day four. This is let there be light. And remember what the Lord showed me was the stars are the heavenly host, the heavenly body surrounding the moon. It's the body of Christ. And so, again, it's just a symbolism. And so it's saying, praise him, shine him, all you stars of light. Let there be light. Jesus says, I give my glory to my people. Why? Well, it's not for ourselves. It's to glorify him. We're that body that glorifies and lifts him up. Verse 4. Praise to shine him, you highest heavens, or heaven of heavens, and you waters above or upon the skies or the heavens. Let them praise to shine the name of the Lord Yahweh. For at his command, they were created or shaped. Six, and he established them forever and ever. He issued or he set a decree, a statue, a law. That will never pass away. In other words, he'll never pass over that. And you can see that it is written in the heavens. So as the heavens declare his glory, he's written it in the heavens. It's not going away. These are things that are and that are going to happen in full circle. So I love how the Lord writes. He has books in heaven. He uses his people to write. He writes himself like he did with Moses with the Ten Commandments. But he also writes in the heavens. You know what? He also writes on our hearts. So let us go now to the book of Job, chapter 38, verses 1 through 7. Now this is going to be the last of the verses I speak of. However, I'm going to speak them. I'm going to give a little insight. But I'm going to let you seek the Lord's face on this for more in depth. Okay, verse 1. Then the Lord Yahweh spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that obscures, darkens my plans or my counsel? With words without knowledge, brace yourself. It means to gird, to equip. Now I pray yourself, meaning your loins, to equip for war like a man. So there's a lot in these couple words here. 
So you're going to gird yourself, equip yourself like a man with loins that are equipped for war. I will question you and you shall answer me. Or in other words, he's saying you shall know. For where were you? And that were you actually translates to where did you fall out? Did you come to pass? Did you become into being in other words? So where did you fall out, come to pass, come into being when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you understand, if you know this understanding. Who marked means to put or set off its dimensions. Surely you know. Or who stretched a line upon it? Upon what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So I'm going to let you seek the Lord on that. We are moving also to verse 15 and 19 through 21. I'm going to continue that. Verse 15. The wicked are denied, meaning to withhold their light. And this light is to let there be light. So remember, when we're born into sin, the sin snuffs out the light. So the wicked are denied. It's withheld the light. And so we can we understand that. And their upraised arm is broken. Let's move down to 19. Where is the way or the journey to the abode, meaning the abiding or dwelling place of the light? Let there be light. Where is it? Where is this dwelling place of let there be light? And where does darkness reside? Where does it stand in its place? That you take them to their places, that you know the paths of their dwellings. Now, the Lord is saying, you know, for at that time you were already born. You were already brought forth. You were already begotten, in other words. So there is something very deep there you need to seek the Lord on. And the number of your days, great. So seek the Lord on that. And uh, may he bring that revelation to you. So that wraps up the light word. However, I am going to give this. After the Lord showed me this revelation, it was some time after. I had heard about this and I looked it up and found it. And it puts it all into perspective so beautifully. A visual, a physical with the light. And him saying, let there be light. And it breathes it into you. Scientists have discovered something beautiful. And so I'm just going to read it from here. So if you go on the internet and Google, in the search engine, you need to put YouTube, Zinc, Z-I-N-C, and I-V-F. So you'll actually put that YouTube, Zinc, and I-V-F. And it should be the first thing that pops up. And the description is Zinc and I-V-F. The flash of light at the very moment a sperm cell makes contact with an egg. And I'm just going to read this here. Scientists just captured the flash of light that sparks when a sperm meets an egg. This was actually in January 16th, 2018. For the first time ever, scientists have captured images of the flash of light that sparks at the very moment a human sperm cell makes contact with an egg. And that makes all perfect sense. So here's a scientific community showing this, but it all matches perfectly. So when we see things in the natural world, science, they line up perfectly with the word of God as long as people aren't taking it to some other perverse level. So when the Lord formed Adam from the dust, so that was the body, you know, the dust, he breathed in and we've learned that that light hit him. He had the light of God, the light of Jesus in him, his soul and his spirit, and it became a living being, a living vessel. So we're not taken from dirt anymore. The Lord said, multiply through sperm and egg. Not sperm by itself, not egg by itself, both of them together. And this just beautifully just shows the moment the sperm enters the egg, there's a flash of light. So there's the whole controversy of when life begins and people try to get it to at least the heartbeat. And I know for believers, we think the moment of conception. Well, this is proof. This is the moment of conception because here's that light that happens. And through all the revelation the Lord has just given us now, we can actually see it. As soon as the fulfillment of the dust, so to speak, (laughs) dust we came from, dust will return, of the egg and the sperm coming together to make it whole, to make it complete so the Lord can knit it, it is a living being. That soul and spirit hit it. And then the Lord is busy at work knitting that baby together. So please look at that and you'll enjoy that. So the next place on this journey mapped out by Lord God Jesus will be called the name Jesus. So we'll be starting that next time.